This video is brought to you by Surfshark VPN. What's up guys, Michael here. Today, we're going to talk about the off-kilter superhero show that dares to ask, is it totally chill to do a bunch of murders as long as it's for some greater purpose? Yup, HBO Max's Peacemaker. The James Gunn TV series takes the Suicide Squad's most deplorable character and makes him the center of a ragtag gang of special operatives who we somehow end up rooting for by the end. The show has plenty of Gunn's signature humor. I wanna take you home, play with you with my G.I. Joes. Just don't f Chewbacca. Here's a little known fact. Wookiees have teeth on their asshole. That's canon. And over the top violence. But we think it's also asking an interesting question. Specifically, is it okay to kill as long as it's in the name of peace? To be clear, Wisecrack is not endorsing murder in any way, shape, or form. So let's explore in this Wisecrack edition on Peacemaker. Peace, love, and bullets. And as always, spoilers ahead. But before we dive in, I want to tell you about this week's sponsor. Surfshark VPN. Surfshark VPN helps you secure your data by using uncrackable encryption and the most secure VPN protocols. One of the things I love most about Surfshark is that it keeps my location totally private and that can have huge advantages. For instance, I can access streaming content that's only been released in other countries, so I can keep up with new movies and shows even if they haven't reached the US yet. And now that traveling is a thing again, it keeps airlines from gouging me on inflated ticket prices based on my location. Instead, I can connect my secure Surfshark VPN to other VPNs in different countries until I track down the best deal. One subscription covers all your favorite devices, like your laptop. Android, Amazon Fire Stick, PlayStation, and more. Plus, you can still use your favorite apps too, like Chrome and Firefox. Get started by clicking the link in the description and using the promo code WISECRACK. When you do, you can get Surfshark VPN for 83% off plus three extra months for free. Go to surfshark.deals slash wisecrack or hit the link in the description. Protect yourself online and download Surfshark VPN today. And now, back to the show. Let's start with a quick refresher on John Cena's Peacemaker. The character, who made his on-screen debut last year in Guns the Suicide Squad, has a pretty straightforward ethos. I cherish peace with all my heart. I don't care how many men, women, and children I need to kill to get it. And by the end of the film, it was clear that for him, fighting for peace means murdering your own comrades to cover up the violent secrets of your government's dirty deeds, among other things. It was clear that Gunn was using the character to comment on both the murderous exploits of our favorite superheroes and the logic they used to justify their astronomical body counts. Peacemaker isn't the first modern superhero to ponder whether or not it can be ethical to commit violence and violate human rights in the name of the greater good. What if the world was safe? What if next time aliens roll up to the club, and they will, they couldn't get past the bouncer? But to really understand the history of good guys doing violence, we have to go all the way back to St. Augustine. No, not the historic Florida city where I took field trips in high school, the theologian and church father who was credited with inventing just war theory. This is the idea that because God gives governments power for good reason, it can be ethical for those governments to wage war under certain conditions. And this theory has helped many a nation justify many a war. According to this theory, the criteria for a just war includes last resort, the force can only be used after all peaceful options have been exhausted, legitimate authority, i.e. a just war can only be pursued by a government, just cause, war needs to be in response to some wrong or attack suffered, probability of success, there needs to be a rational possibility of winning, right intention, the aim of war needs to be the reestablishment of peace, proportionality, the violence inflicted needs to be proportional to violence suffered, and civilian casualties. Innocent victims should never be the target of war, and soldiers should avoid harming them. Now, if we were to use Augustine's criteria to evaluate the antics of Peacemaker and Co. in the Suicide Squad film, it doesn't seem like they're waging a pure and holy war. For one, they violate the last resort criterion using violence first rather than exhausting all other options. Then again, you probably don't want Harley Quinn engaging in diplomacy. What's more, it arguably fails on the legitimate authority front. Peacemaker's actions don't seem to be tied to a legitimate government authority, as Task Force X functions more as a sketchy black ops squad rather than, say, the Department of Defense. And of course, there's no proportionality happening as Peacemaker seems unlimited in his violent potential, even when it comes to his coworkers. I guess this is what happens when you don't have an HR department. 
And throughout the film, we never get any indication he's concerned about his actions being anything less than just. But in the new series, Peacemaker seems more doubtful about his own motives and is openly haunted by memories of killing Rick Flagg. Right off the bat, we see Peacemaker being grilled by a janitor about his suspicious killing tendencies. Peacemaker! Yes. You're that racist superhero! Oh. You only kill minorities, man! Later in the series, he finds himself unable to pull the trigger when tasked with assassinating a whole family, including their two children. Peacemaker, take him out! Even the kids? Yes! Mind you, these children are possessed by alien butterflies, but shooting a kid is still a still bad, it's just a bad vibe. Here, Peacemaker struggles with some just war criteria including civilian casualties and having the right intentions. Soon after, rather than killing the leader of the butterflies, Peacemaker keeps him in a jar and feeds him alien goo. But it's much less fashionable these days as questions of war have now largely transitioned into matters of national security. The current theory used in international relations to understand how states justify violence is called securitization or security theory. Now, the just war method of evaluating the goodness of bombs and bullets was all the rage in the first part of the 20th century, as democratic nations were responding to large-scale fascism and genocide. But it's much less fashionable these days, as questions of war have now largely transitioned into matters of national security. The current theory used in international relations to understand how states justify violence is called securitization, or security theory. Now, just war theory sought to understand what responses a government could take after they were already under some type of attack. In contrast, securitization is all about the national security measures a state can justify based on potential future threats, ostensibly to keep its people safe. It's like if there are reports that another nation is developing some new type of high-powered weapons. Under securitization, even if these weapons haven't been employed yet, states might use the specter of these threats to justify preemptive countermeasures. In this way of thinking, the response is to what might happen rather than to what has happened. Like how America invaded Iraq based on speculative threat rather than in response to an actual attack. Or how the speculative threat of future terrorism led to the passing of the Patriot Act which many argue violates individual liberties and freedoms in the name of security. For scholar Mark Neoclis, the logic of security lies not in a vision of freedom and emancipation, but in a means of modeling the whole of human society around a particular vision of order. Under the traditional just war model, violence was only necessary to protect a state from attack. But under securitization, states can arguably use perceived threats to create systems of order. This can lead to citizens being forced to surrender themselves to the will of the state under the guise of protection and security. Measures like these can make the line between right and wrong a little murky. And this seems to be at the heart of Peacemaker's original ethos, as a number of militaristic sins can be forgiven under the guise of security, i.e. preventing potential threats, which becomes another way of saying peace, including things like murdering civilians who just happen to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. But for Mark Neoclis, often the security offered is just a way to conveniently suspend the law. The idea that the permanent emergency involves the suspension of the law encourages the idea that resistance must involve a return to legality, a return to the normal mode of governing through the rule of law. This involves a serious misjudgment, in which it is simply assumed that legal procedures, both international and domestic, are designed to protect human rights from state violence. According to Mark Neoclis, the effect of securitization is often creating a type of permanent emergency that suspends the law momentarily with the promise that this temporary suspension will help us get back to the normal mode of governing through the rule of law. But according to his critique, this involves a serious misjudgment in which we assume that the law is designed to protect our rights and freedoms in the first place rather than simply to give the state more power. The idea here is that if the end goal is a return to normal, and in particular, a peaceful normal, then violence can be easily justified. And this logic seems to be one that Peacemaker and other members of his team are wrestling with throughout the series. We see this logic of securitization in the Suicide Squad when the team is initially under the impression that their mission is for the sake of taking down some bad guys and one giant alien monster who could potentially kill a bunch of people. <laughs> 
<laughs> but it's later revealed that they are simply covering the tracks of the US government, who are behind the whole thing to begin with. Child, your government didn't send you here to protect the world from alien technology. Your government sent you here to cover up their part in it. And while this reveal eventually turns most of the team against the government for the sake of protecting human life, Peacemaker doubles down. As for him, protecting American secrets and preserving peace are one and the same. And the series has a similar vibe early on, as the team's mission is motivated by the same logic of security, even when they're largely left in the dark about why they are actually taking out the butterflies, which again are alien butterflies that embed themselves in human brains brains to control their bodies. But the simple logic remains. These butterflies are a speculative threat to national security and must be taken out at all costs, even if that means some collateral kills along the way. Of course, this gets complicated as the team learns more about who they are actually fighting. They eventually learn that the butterflies are also motivated by the logic of securitization. The only difference is that theirs skews more towards environmentalism than militarism or nationalism. And this type of climate-based securitization is increasingly becoming a real thing in places like the EU. After losing their home planet to a gradually destroyed ecosystem, the butterflies are attempting to help humans avoid the same fate by covertly taking over the political system to prioritize climate protection efforts. The people of Earth were on the exact same trajectory as our people had been. Ignoring science in favor of populist leaders who tell you that the floods and the fires and the disease are unrelated to your own actions. However, in order to do this, they need to take over the bodies of otherwise innocent human beings, effectively killing them in the process. The butterflies then beg the same question that peacemakers' actions do. Can you justify killing people in order to preserve the peace and greater good? But Peacemaker and co. appear to be motivated to stop the butterflies based on the intel that the butterflies are attempting to take over the planet and must be stopped at all costs to protect humanity. And here, the government is using a threat to justify extreme security measures. Ironically, of course, that threat is an attempt to save the Earth from environmental catastrophe. We made a vow to make the choices for you that you were incapable of making on your own, to save your people and your world. Now, the peacemaker of the Suicide Squad would seemingly have have no problem with eradicating the butterflies out of a militant commitment to the ideals of the security state. This version of the character is just a raw embodiment of that logic. At its most extreme, it seems that with this version of the character, Gunn is exploring the dark side of America's id. He even goes so far as to make Peacemaker's dad a literal Nazi. Oh hail! The White Dragon. But don't worry, Peacemaker kills him. Make of that what you will. So does Peacemaker offer any type of solution for the problems inherent in modern securitization? In one sense, the show and its titular character pretty explicitly question and criticize the type of security measures used by contemporary Western nations. Whether it's Adebayo struggling to understand how it's necessary to casually kill innocent bystanders, or Peacemaker being unable to take out children as part of a mission, the team is openly grappling with their loyalty to the security state. But by the end of the season, the show has taken an almost fatalistic approach to the idea of morally justified violence. The whole team has become disillusioned by Amanda Waller and Task Force X, with Adebayo going so far as to snitch on her own mother on TV. It's been running for years out of Bell Reef Prison under the command of, of a woman named Amanda Waller. Seemingly a critique of securitization. The show also seems to cast some doubt on the morality of the good type of securitization endorsed by the butterflies, in which rights can be curtailed and violence can be imposed for the sake of saving the planet and thus humanity as a whole. Ultimately, Peacemaker stops the remaining butterflies from carrying out their plan. Activate human torpedo. <laughs> not out of disagreement with their ideological position, one he seems to agree with and later regrets interfering with. Did I just kill the world? Rather, he does so simply because enabling them might have led to his friends being killed. Why did you choose not to help them? 
Because I knew they'd hurt you and the others if I did. And now that he's killed his Nazi dad, and he's seemingly moved beyond his old commitment to American security, it seems like friendship is all he has left to believe in. At the end of the day, the show seems to be saying the logic of securitization is so rampant that we're probably screwed either way. So in the meantime, maybe look out for your friends, take the time to rock out on long drives, and try to avoid being a literal Nazi. And in doing so, the show is also pretty transgressive in the context of recent DC, EU, and MCU content. It's forcing us to ask if maybe some of our heroes are actually the bad guys, and if the logic used to justify their actions is eerily similar to the political logic of our own societies. But what do you guys think? Is Peacemaker a hilarious and violent critique of securitization, or are we just trying to justify rooting for such an odious character? Let us know what you think in the comments. Thanks to all of our amazing patrons, and don't forget to check out our podcast. Hit that subscribe button like you're a Peacemaker helmet in human torpedo mode, and don't forget to ring that bell. And as always, thanks for watching. Later.